There we go. There we are. Is anybody there? Is anybody there? Can they hear us? I don't know. It's doing something. Okay. So where's the comments from up here? I guess so. Oh, there we go. Now we're live. Okay. Hello. Who's there? Let's see. Oh, I see. Do you want to swap over? Because they're going to buy this pad, is it? We can do. Do you want to? Yeah. Go on. Okay. Watch yourself. <laughs> you go and that chair. Oh, yes. Of course. Cool. <laughs> All right. Get your bum in front of those pictures and things. <laughs> My best side. There we go. That's better. Oh, hi, Ross. Hey, who's that? Chris Hannett. It's like being back at public school. Hello, Robert. Jake, oh my God. Steve, oh, Steve, my man. How are you doing? <laughs> All right. Jim, you better read the, if there's any questions. Hey, hello, well, Emma. Hello, hello, Emma. This is the first time we've ever done this, so, uh, you know, there may be a few TV calls here. I should say, hello, chums, my new cat. Hi, Lawrence. My brother from another mother. <laughs> right what shall we well here we go here we go we're just sorry we, we're getting used to this um how are we both doing we're doing well aren't we we're doing really well yes amazing we've been locked in together for nearly a month and <laughs> near a crossword so there you no, go just no, surviving amazing. on alcohol and comedy really. <laughs> has everybody been watching our um youtube videos and what are your comments Ooh. Can you hear me, mother? So you said that, so you've gone. It's a start of a 10 there. There's no prize, as always. <laughs> Go on. He's been watching our films. Yeah, da a daily, uh, hashtag daily comedy films, which were like, oh, John hey, Jonathan, you darling boy, how are you? Oh, oh Mr. Hello. Mitchell, oh, hello. hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for a Terry Scott question to come up. Wow, this is amazing. Okay, right. Should we, should we start? Let's yeah, start. Yeah, okay. okay. So, yes, go on, darling. Another team. Well, let's talk about your first born my first book first published in 1996 uh, there was somebody i think um, was concerned that they had a copy but it was a different cover there's been about four or five different editions of the Karen companion uh it's fundamentally the same book and it's just updated every so often so i'm very very pleased to go back and, and revisit it occasionally oh, so we we've we've come up with this idea to start a robert ross book club which we're gonna do on a weekly basis <laughs> hopefully. hopefully so we're going to start with the carry-on companion mm. um wh when did you when did you get the idea for writing <laughs> this book um uh but i was about 16 i think so uh, mid to late 80s mm -hmm. um so i was obsessed with the carry-ons from a young age and i was quite um perturbed where the radio times would give films i considered i mean not not, not all the karens are created equal obviously but i was quite annoyed when the the cream of the crop like up the kyber and carry on camping were given like one or two stars out of five in the radio times film guide so i made it my mission to write a proper uh not quite academic but uh, um sort of affectionate and uh and um detailed account of all the carry on films and tv shows and, and stage shows so i started writing to people so we're talking i was about 16 or 17. i got answers from kenneth williams and frankie howard and jim whitfield and bernard cribbins and i thought oh i'm gonna get a publisher easily um but i didn't uh, fast forward it came out in 1996 so in between i went to the university and went back and rewrote it and yeah so, so i've got a question here from lawrence and he said how is that many your brother lawrence my brother lawrence okay yeah. he said how many sids would you give the book <laughs> good good question um five of course um shall i explain how the sid thing came about yeah Cause, why not because uh it's basically if you haven't seen the book uh, i give um the, the 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 least good i still like the least good so the least good carry on films are, they get get one sid all the way up to five sids um and i pinched that idea with with great love from a book uh, that my dad gave me uh just called lauren and hardy um by the mr lauren hardy john mccabe a great um uh, american film historian and it was a film by film celebration of all stan and ollie's films and he did a sort of a a, a rating of bowler hats so up to bowler hats and he went down to half bowler hats um 
but I didn't want to do a half Sid James. I thought it was a bit cruel. So um, I, I, I did the same for Sid's. And I, I, I hand uh, typed this thing on an old, um, you know, manual typewriter. And I think in my mum's loft somewhere, there's probably the, the original manuscript. And I had a lovely, I think it's the same one we used for the book. Hold on. Yes, it is. Um, the little Sid's was from a publicity photograph I had from Carry On Loving. And I had an 8 by 10 and I sort of had this um, Xerox machine at my mum's work, my old school. And it could reduce the image down to little tiny SIDs. Mm. So I had, so I actually stuck them on to the original manuscript. Uh, you know, I cut them out and stuck them on, and that was, and it stuck. I'm sort of quite, quite. I would, I would go back now and probably uh, reevaluate some of them. I think I was very, very harsh on Carry On Cowboy. I think I was very harsh on Carry On Jack. Um, but I still stand by my two for Karen Emmanuel. I think someone was having a go for giving two. I still stand by that. Okay, we've got lots of questions coming okay, through. Grand. So I'm just going to rewind a little bit yeah. and forgive me if I miss anybody's question, but there's lots of things here about people having lots of signatures in their books. Oh, yes. So right. that's, that's very exciting. Fabulous. Yes. Um, I believe yours has well, been. Well, yeah, I mean, this, this, this was the, I, uh, on today's um, film, the, 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 the a YouTube film. Um, this was my very first publishing uh, edition from my publishers in 1996. And and basically, everybody I've met involved with the Carry On since 1996, I've got to sign that. So that's that's the thing I would probably rescue from the fire if there was a fire here. So okay. yes, that's my, my promise. Um, okay, so then, um, the, oh, there's a question here about Bernard Brislaw. Perhaps mm -hmm. you've not necessarily given him enough scope in the book oh gosh uh, <laughs> i think i think if you read the book cover to cover you would discover that the young me was and still is rather fond of both sid james and peter butterworth so i maybe give them too many i pick a best performance from each film or tv show um i love bernard breslow i met him a couple of times he was an absolute sweetheart um so uh yeah um I, I'm, I'm sorry i i do i love him dearly um but i think i'm not quite sure who which ones i give him the best you for you didn't get to meet him though did no you? i met him in blackpool um oh, did. they did a, they did an end of the pier show in 1992 called what a carry on in blackpool with barbara windsor and bernard breslow so maybe um, you could do another book then, just for Bernie. Oh, I'd love to do a book about Bernie. <laughs> oh, gosh, yes, absolutely. That's on the list for sure. Now, another interesting question that's come through, something we talked about earlier today. Mm. Um, this is from John Mitchell, and he says, <laughs> would on. you change any Sid ratings for any of the films? Yeah, I would. I said, just said, I, I think I was harsh on Cowboy. I gave Cowboy 2, which I think is awful of me i should i think at least three if not four um uh, carry on jack i would probably bump up to three now um uh, i i saw i've got a soft spot for columbus but i still keep it for one i think for various reasons england i think still one but i still stick to emmanuel now i know a lot of people have no time for emmanuel but the thing this you've got to understand that i wrote this you know when i was in my late teens and and then it came out in my sort of early 20s mid 20s so you couldn't regularly regularly get these they weren't on dvd they weren't on telly all the time um not the later ones certainly and emmanuel didn't get onto tv i don't think until well after this was published maybe around the time it came out but certainly when i when i was loving the carry-ons for the first time you couldn't get emmanuel for love no money so my mum my mum actually spoke i think it was either jack garden or one of this maybe it was jack garden assistant editor and he gave her a link to some um, uh, random uh, video rental shop in Hyper Heath, and they had a copy. So I mean, it took me so long to get a copy. So when it finally came, it was literally the Holy Grail. So you've got to imagine I was probably about 15 or something, 16, putting this tape in and suddenly seeing this, this lost carry on for the first time. So I think a lot of my love for it is in the fact it took me so long to see a copy. Okay. So another question here. How how were you first introduced to the carry ons? Um, television. Um, so so my my mum and dad were both fans of, of film and TV comedy. My dad particularly comedy, so I, I was winged on the Goon Show and Hancock's Half Hour and those sort of radio shows. And I would I think they worked out quite early on that I would stop crying if they put me in front of the telly and there was a, a Frankie Howard repeat or two Ronnies on or something. So I, 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 I saw these films without knowing who they were, but I sort of warmed to them. I think like kids warm to Mickey Mouse or Bugs Bunny. I think, I think those faces of Sid James and Hattie Jakes, there's a little warmth to them. So I sort of liked these people and they were on, the early ones were on TV quite a lot. I seem to remember them being on sort of like six o'clock in the evening on BBC Two. And you just kept on seeing the same people pop up in different, 
characterization so i just sort of i just warmed to them i don't know i i just i just got i just fell in love with them so when i was a kid it was it was carry on films and and walt disney films were my absolute passions mm. um so yeah that was it really just a, a, a lifelong love now this is an interesting one mm -hmm. um this is from chris he says who would be your favorite carry on actors and actresses and that's to both of us well, that's a good question uh well i've said james and peter Butler, uh jim dale uh Charles Hawtrey, I think, is the most photogenic of all of them. Um, uh, female, I'd probably th Joan Sims, I think, was because I loved her as a mate. Mine as well. would be Hattie Jakes. Hattie Jakes, yeah, we did Hattie on our podcast. Yeah, we <laughs> did. We? If you haven't seen it, we have a podcast over on Podbean.com. If you if you just type in Robert Ross, comedy um, heroes, comedy heroes, uh, you can hear, and we're taking different comedy actors and actresses, and the first two were Carry Ons. Uh, Frankie Howard and Hattie Jakes and we, Marty Feldman and we just did yesterday Peter Sellers so yeah that was fun. Now here's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Would you consider making your books available for Kindle? <laughs> well it's, it's not down to me I mean it's down to the publishers I'm, I've got no I've got, I think Marty Feldman is on Kindle um, I have no I, I, I would happily have my books published in any language in any planet uh, <laughs> in any format I'm, I'm, I'm a I'm a humble writer and the more books I sell, the, the more I get to eat really. So, um, um, another interesting question here, which again is something that, um, I know we've, we've talked about is Gail Granger. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Who's happened? asked about Gail Granger? Uh, Neil White. Neil White. Hello, Neil. Oh, I know Neil, I think. Um, did you, I think you still come to the Pinewood events. Um, G Gail Granger is, is the absolute missing link. I mean, if you're out there, Gail, watching this, or if you see the recording of this, uh, for those who don't know, I'm sure you all do, um, she played the sort of the, the Valerie Leon part in Carry On Abroad. Uh, you're squashing my itinerary and all that um, with Kenneth Williams. So, so she's a sort of glamour girl. And, and she did a few things after. I think she pops up in an episode of Minder later. But she sort of, she, I'm actually, she got married. And so so that's a problem with, 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 with female performers. If they get married, you can't trace them as easy because they change their name. Um, so I've never, she's the only one I think I've never tracked down. I've met pretty much everybody uh, living and who's died in the last 20 odd years involved with carry on both in front of and behind the camera but never gail so i'd love to meet her because i love her in carry on abroad it's probably the one it's my go-to sort of um uh comfort blanket carry on it's not the best made by any bit means but it's it's the one i sort of love the most i think it's it's charles hawtrey's last carry on film of course and uh it's 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 got lots of happy memories for me that film oh so another interesting question and i don't think i've ever asked you this okay. um this is from Chris Stratton, and he asks, "How did you get to do the commentary on the Carry On DVD?" Well, I mean, this, that's another good. I, I saw thanks to this book, which I owe my entire career for what it is too. Um, I became the sort of Mr. The go-to guy on the Carry On, so I did lots of TV documentaries. Still get asked to do documentaries about key, uh, the Carry On films and the various actors involved in them. Um, and um, I was approached by ITV who owned them at the time um, and they owned the uh, the rank organization title so that was don't lose your head and follow that camel and then carry on doctor all the way through to that's carry on and they had Karen Emanuel that was an, a Hemdale film originally but but rank had bought that rights so we had those um, from number 13 through to number 30 uh columbus of course was a different thing entirely that's island world so i did the commentaries and they asked me to go in and i mean it's the i mean it was i always call it the best day's work of my life although it took the whole process was about a year and a half but to sit down in abbey road the first five we did in abbey road so the first four we recorded were the ones with jim dale which was don't let your head follow that camel karen again doctor and carry on again Do uh, doctor and Karen and then doctor and then we did a fifth one uh, carry on abroad with uh, David Kern and the late David Kern. Um, uh, who else was I? Sally Geeson, my dear friend Sal, uh, Carol Hawkins, and the late John Clive. So that was, so we did five in two days um, in um, Abbey Road Studios, the Beatles Studio. Uh, so I was sat there with uh, with John Clive, who's one of the voices in Yellow Submarine, um, and he was doing sort of Beatles voices. It was the most surreal. That was that was a two day of those five and it was knackering but then the, the on the night of the sunday night i think or the, the night before we did the second two with jim the doctor films i had a really quite a beautifully boozy dinner with jim um in joe allen's as was uh, in the west end so that was fun yeah so, so another interesting question 
um, you don't have to name the person, but was there anybody you interviewed on a commentary that you didn't quite warm to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think people know this if they listen to them. I mean, I'm, the person in question I really respected and loved, um, but he, uh, it was a difficult, a difficult couple of films. Ooh. And that's all. I, I think when they came out, because the, the, that first, the batch, they were released in reverse order, if that makes sense. So, so, so the rank films came out first, I think about 2003. And that year, one of these commentaries got voted the most hilarious for all the wrong reasons commentary of that year, um, because everything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, but, uh, and, then, and then about two years later, um, uh, Studio Canal, Canal Plu, uh, which is what uh, is now Anglo Amalgamated back in the, in the 50s and 60s, Anglo Amalgamated went to ITV. Look, we have these 12 carry-ons, which was from the first one, Sergeant, all the way through to number 12, Carry On Screaming. And they were going to do commentaries as well. And they said, well, look, can we get the guy that did yours? Because they were really good. And then so ITV did a deal with Canal Plu. So that's why you get the box of all 30. So that's a, mm. that's a joint deal between two different distribution companies. Um, okay. Um, now, this is an interesting question because people who know you very well know that you're a big Doctor Who fan. <laughs> you, yes, and you can Matthew probably, here. You can, see, you can see Colin Baker <laughs> behind Jim and Sylvester McCoy behind uh, Gemma Taylor. There he yeah, is. Uh, Matthew K here has said, have you ever watched any Doctor Who episodes starring Carry On veterans beside William Hartnell and John Pertwee? I've well, seen, I'm guessing I've seen that's a yes. Every single uh, surviving episode of Doctor Who several times. So yes, the answer is yeah. And a bit of a shout out to Paul Perkins here. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Can't wait to get back to uh, the Comedy Museum. He was at my last gig that we did before the, the lockdown uh which was um my ever-changing show called forgotten heroes of comedy and if you carry on people get into that so that's a book and a show and that i tour around so hello paul yes. so he's asking a question about tabot rothwell or tolly as tolly, you call tolly, it. tolly indeed yes and yep. saying um would you have been hang on have, did you ever get the chance to meet him Hello. and um who would you have loved to have interviewed from the team um, I didn't meet Tolly. Um, I, I had a, a few correspondence with his with his widow. Um, um, and Tyler Butterworth, of course, who's Peter's son and Janet Brown's son. Uh, the Butterworth and the Rothwell family were very closely uh, interlaced because Tolly and Peter were in the same prisoner of war camp during the war. Um, so they met um, in the uh, early forties. So yeah, I mean, Tolly was is a genius writer. He could he could reheat jokes such so brilliantly and make them funny afresh and i think when he came in um with um uh, carry on cabby was the first in production but the first one he wrote was was carry on jack which was turned into a carry on by the creator and the producer peter rogers um it's a different sort of feel to it but i mean they all work they all work as carry ons in in different ways primarily because the casts you know they're not all in all of the films but there's enough people in each one to, to sort of cement them together um and a person i would have loved to have met uh, or uh, well, sid james has to be sid james Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So um, <laughs> there's a question here from your sister. Hello, my... Fibs, my darling sister. How are you? She said she listened to your Peter Sellers podcast this afternoon. Let's carry on today, darling. So, oh, yeah, okay, go on. <laughs> but no, she says, yeah. which carry on do you think he would fit into best? That's okay. a really good question. That's a really good question. Oh, gosh. Might have to phone her about that. No, well, well I'll, let me think about that. I mean, I want I'll, I'll, I, to be honest, I suppose he would have been really good in in a sort of a, a role that was reworked from Sid not being available. So I would hate to lose Harry H. Corbett from Carry On Screaming, but I can see Peter Sellers doing a very good Sergeant Sidney Bung, I think, because he fits into that sort of um, uh, uh, lustful leading man sort of type, but without having the wherefore to be lustful. So in the, in, he was around that time, 1966, he was doing a little British cameo in a film called The Wrong Box, which I adore. Um, Ralph Richardson and, and John Mills and uh, Tony mm. Hancock and, and Peter's in that as this mad doctor that's surrounded by cats. So so I think, yeah, carry on screaming. But okay. I hate to lose Harry H. Corbett. <laughs> okay, uh, Jonathan Sloman. Hi, Jonathan. Um, he's asked, this is an interesting question, who is the least likely person you've learned is a carry-on fan? So who have you met that or know of that's a carry-on fan? Oh, that's fan? a really good question. Um, Oh gosh, I think that's really hard. Yeah, I mean, there, there's people that, that you might obviously think people on Mike Myers, for example, Austin Powers and, and uh, Wayne's World. Um, but he's a fan of lots of British comedy, particularly Carry On. Um, 
Mel Brooks, it sort of makes sense, but Mel's a, Mel's a fan. You can watch Blazing Saddles and get a lot of carry on sort of feelings from that. But um, there's a few, there's a few people. Now, who was it? Who was it? I remember seeing, oh, was it like Lisa Faulkner or somebody? It was some, some really hot presenter about, few, about five or six years ago that said, I, my favorite film is Carry On Cruising. But I think it was Lisa Faulkner or it might have been Holly Willoughby. Well, well, that, <laughs> that sort of type of person anyway, which, which is in my head somewhere. But yeah, you spot, but they're on all the time. So I think, you know, I forget, you know, I'm nearly 50 now, but I think people, you're a lot younger. You, you don't aren't, look aren't it. Aren't I lucky? Um, it's but, why we got dark light. Oh, yes, thank you. All right. <laughs> you can be replaced, you know. Um, so, but I, yeah, you, so, so they're on all the time. So you are, you're getting youngsters that, that like them. So, uh, yeah, I'd go for, for, for one of those random hot presenters. Okay. Uh, question from Lawrence. If you could ask Sid James one question, what would it be? What's going to win the four o'clock at Chetswood? No, okay. um, <laughs> he wouldn't know the answer to that. Um, oh. I think I'd ask him, in 1973, what was Tony Hancock really like to work with? I'd okay. like to know that. Really okay. get the true answer. Um, another one from Chris Spicer here. Oh, Chris. Um, Hello, man. How you doing? From North London. He's asking, did the carry-ons have posh premieres? Well, <laughs> they had premieres. They weren't particularly posh. I mean, there's a few in, in London. I remember talking to Jimmy Logan, um, who was uh, the Scottish uh, comedian and, and uh, entrepreneur, um, uh, who was Burke Conway and Carrie on Abroad, and then came back for the next film in in the, the Charles Hawtrey shaped cameo of Cecil Gaybody in Carry On Girls. Um, and I asked him, and he he was a Scottish guest star. They did a massive, big um, press night in Glasgow, and he turned up this sort of guest of honour, and the place was was all shut down and no lights on. And he said to his wife, he said, I think we've come to the wrong place. And they, he knocked on the door, and this old janitor guy opened it. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, come on in. He goes, what, this is the the place for the premiere he goes oh yeah yeah we're all here and there's this this half full cinema and that was the world premiere of Carrie and abroad and it was like and and it, they showed the film it got a lot of laughs and applause and then they had a break about halfway through <laughs> and a person apparently this is jimmy logan told me he was on tour i met jimmy logan just in mid 90s when he was touring in of all things Chekhov's um uncle vanya playing the title role and i met him uh, in the the theater um haymarket theater in bainstone and he said there was a they were breaking the film maybe about an hour in and then this old deer came on with a tray for ice creams and drinks on a stick and uh jimmy went in what do you want jimmy? he went down and get and, and he came back to his seat and his wife was killing herself with laughter saying i've not been to many film premieres but this is the first time i've seen one of the stars queuing up for his own ice cream <laughs> at the interval so so the answer is that's a long answer saying no they weren't particularly lavish at all but um uh, yeah okay another one uh from steve mullen um Steve, thank you so much. You follow everything. It's great. Yeah, I just want to say that. You'll get your money later, Steve. Um, good question. Why are the carry on still being edited for television uh, in this day and age? I mean, it's a very good question. I mean, it, it depends on sometimes it's for time purposes. It, it really annoys me, actually, when they get cut. Um, so that's why I'm a great advocate, obviously, to buy the DVD um, because you get all the extras, the trailers and stills galleries and my little notes and all that and the commentaries. Um, but they do show them in the wrong time sometimes. I mean, there's certain films, they're, they're cut for nudity or they're cut for content. Um, so I remember the first time I saw Carry On Behind, which was, there was, I think it was a Saturday night, it was Carry On Behind, and then this next Saturday was Carry On Abroad. And I had one of my early, my dad's VHSs, I think it was like tape 10 or something. These two Carry Ons, they're, they're the two I sort of know best because I watched that tape so much. I was probably about 10 or 11 or something. But they cut, that bit with the performer Jenny Cox, who's the, the striptease artist. So when in Carry On Behind, so when Kenneth... Yeah, there we go. The... Tell me about that. <laughs> Which Hello. Means we've lost questions. Can you hear me? Alan Cole's commenting on Robert Russell's video. It's the old video. They need to find oh. it. We've got a new one. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's see who comes online. Is anybody there? Are we still live? We're live, are we? No, we are live. There we go. Look at every comment. It's pretty old again. Chat 29 down there. Look. No, but that's my chat. Oh, it's your chat. Okay. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've got the old questions. Okay, fine. Oh, here we go. Are you back? Yes, Neil, we are back. Yes. Hello. Should we wait for some other people to catch up? There's a slight technical hitch there. <laughs> the computer crashed. <laughs> oh, here we go. More here people go. are coming. Shall we wait a bit or shall I pick up on that? Um, I'll tell you what I did see. Just before it went. Oh, here's oh, and Dean's back on there. I've now. got the we old lost questions. Jenny, yeah. you, lost you at Jenny Cox. Okay. Thanks, Neil, for that. Okay, well, I will pick up. I'll tell you what I did see literally going along. I think my mate Brett was on saying David Curran isn't late because he's not dead. Well, that's true. He's not le the late John Clive, I meant, which I think I said. But to be honest, David Curran was late for the recording, so I'm sort of right. Anyway, yes, uh, David is still with us, thankfully. So uh, let's, should we pick up some, you got some questions from the I've previous one? I've got some one? questions. If they're there, um... let's pick them up, man. Okay, Susie Dawkins, she says, Hi there, I always think Vera Day would have been great in a carry-on film. <laughs> Playing a Babs Windsor type yeah, role. Uh, totally, yes, uh, yes. Is there any actor or actress who hasn't been in a carry-on who you think they should have cast? Vera Day. Uh, is Susie back with us? I don't know, who knows? Who, how can we tell who's on at the moment? We can't, can we? Um, I'll answer Susie's question anyway. Uh, yeah, I agree, Vera Day would have been brilliant. Um, uh, she was certainly doing a lot of films with Sid James at that time, so obviously too many crooks and uh, uh, and the same to you and all that. So early carry on. I mean, she just stopped doing films really. I think there was a lot of uh, in her own words. She was my my best pals day. Uh, Dame Vera will be call her Vera Day. Um, but um, yeah, she would have been great in the carry ons. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm uh, I always think it might have been quite interesting in the late sixties to sort of shake it up a bit and put someone like Peter Cook in or. Marty Feldman in just to sort of like really embrace the the, the, the the fresh sort of satirists of that time. But um but the but the performances were so good of of the regular cast. Um when when people weren't available, like with Kenneth Williams was unavailable, they would obviously bring Frankie Howard back in or something. So so there was a a good pool of talent that both Peter Rogers and Gerald Thomas trusted. So uh yeah, but I would love to have seen someone left field like that, or Peter Peter Sellers as we talked about earlier. But yeah, Peter Cook maybe would have been fun in a sort of uh, a Kenneth Williams sort of dark side of Kenneth Williams performance maybe. Yeah, so a few people are commenting, yes, this is the new video we just, because we crashed Hello. At, and we've had to start again, so I'm very it's, sorry. It's, bl blame the coronavirus, no one knows what the hell they're doing, but anyway, <laughs> we're, we're, we're carrying on regardless. Um, technical hitches. Technical is, hitch, exactly. We're learning a lot in this lockdown. So, um, okay. Okay, somebody just posed a question. Dean. Um, is that Dean Bart? Oh, Dean. Hey, Dean Bart. Hey, Dean. Man. Yeah. He says, do you recall anything about a planned book signing in Blackpool with Jack Douglas? <laughs> I do. I do indeed with Jack Douglas. And uh, uh, it was going to be, was it Blackpool? I think it was Manchester, wasn't it? It was going to be Jack Douglas. Um, it was going to be Amanda Barry because she was doing Coronation Street at that time. And uh, John Pertwee. Um, and it would have been when the book first came out in 1996. Um, and I remember John Perley phoning me um, saying, yes, I'm up for doing it. Um, I'm just off to America to do a Doctor Who convention. Yeah, didn't get back. So that that was pulled. And there was, I think it was some, we were going to do it with Jazz, Jack Douglas, myself and Amanda Barry. And then there was some bomb scare or something. I think this is the one. This was 20, 25 years ago. You weren't even born, were you, Dean? Um, but um, I think there was a bomb scare. It was like an IRA bomb scare or something. So the whole thing was, was pulled and we never remounted it. So. Well, interestingly, like uh, John here has said, John Burr, he says, if it wasn't for your first book launch, he would have never had to meet or got the chance to meet the lovely Jack Douglas. He Cinema said, store in London, yeah. How did you, how did you get your first book? book deal after several years of editing Core Magazine? Oh, John. Yes, I remember John. Um, Core Magazine was a thing. Well, I, I, going back to, this is a callback to the Bernard Breslau question. When, uh, the, the, within days of each other, Bernard Breslau and Les Dawson both died in 1993. I did a thing called Core Magazine, which was stood for Carry On Reading Core. Um, and it was a sort of British comedy fanzine thing. Um, so I got my book deal off the back of that, I suppose. I started writing the book again off the back of doing that. Um, and um, my sister will testify to this if Fiona's back on. Is she that now? Not yet. Um, and um, oh, Alice, Ali's back on. Hi, Ali. Hi, cuz. Um, 
um, so I got a book deal and I went ballistic because I was trying to get this published for so many years, this book. Um, and it was an absolute thrill. So um, it was a lot of hard work. I, I could wallpaper this cottage in rejection letters for that book, the first the book, The Cow and Companion. Um, and then um, I got the BT Batsford's deal, which was a which was a, an old, oh, old, an old publishing. Oh, no, so, 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 <laughs> so I was trying so, to look at the so, questions. So, 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 coming on there. Um, um, and it was some, it was uh, an old, old publisher, well established London publisher, BT Batsford, who are now no longer around. Uh, and they took it on and it sold really well. And I got a three book contract off the back of the first one. Um, but the original, um, um, uh, book signing we, we was going to be with Jim Dale. I don't know, there was advertising for Jim Dale, who was in the West End playing Fagin in Oliver for Cameron McIntosh at that time, 1996. Mm. Uh, and sadly, um, Jim's uh, mother in law was taken very ill, so I had to go back to um, New York where he still lives. Um, and uh, and Jack Douglas, bless him, who was then based, was he on the Isle of Wight at that point? I think he might have been. Yeah, I think he had to come over from the island. Uh, he he agreed to step in at the last minute, and it was a joy. So so yeah, I, I owe Jack a lot. He was a a good pal. I miss him dearly. Oh, this is a sweet one. So this is from Ian Young. He says, and I know this is a place close to your heart. Would you be planning to come to Scotland? As I'm a huge fan and would love to talk to you about the carry on. I love Scotland. Well, Edinburgh, alas, is not going on this. How whereabouts in Scotland are you? Because it's a huge place. But I do tour around. Um, there's a, a lovely little theatre called the Swallow Theatre in in Dumfries and Galloway. I've done a few shows there. So I, I, if you if you click onto the website robertross.co.uk, there's a there's a sort of a, a tours section um, where I'm I'm doing live shows. Obviously not at the moment, <laughs> but um, I've got uh, the only ones that I've still got um, as scheduled are I've got some shows in December that haven't been pulled yet because they're holding fire. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to come to Scotland. Let me know where you are or just drop me an email on the website and, and we'll be in touch. That'd be lovely. Um, okay, so can you share any memories of your correspondence with Fred Griffiths? <laughs> Who's asked How that? did you, Dean has asked Dean, this. How did you find him and did, and did you meet him? I did, did I meet him? I spoke to him on the phone a lot. I met Michael Ward. I'm trying to remember who I did meet now. Fred, Fred Griffiths, for those who don't know who Fred Griffiths is, he basically was, was a cab driver in lots of films. He's, a, he's the cab driver in um, Carry On uh, Loving. Uh, he's the bus conductor in Carry On Regardless with Kenneth Williams and the Chimp. I'll take you, but not your brother. Now, he's that guy. Um, he's in loads of films. He's in Step Turn Son, the movie. Um, he's the barman uh, in, behind the striptease club. Um, and he was he was a, a cabbie in real life for a short time. He also were, he was in Fires Were Started, a 1940s sort of um, uh, pseudo dramatic um, uh, documentary film about about the, the, the guys, the very brave uh, volunteers putting out the fires in London during the Blitz. So that's how he broke into acting. And I think I just wrote him. I just wrote him a letter care of the BBC I think uh, and they and he passed it on to his he had a little flat in London North London somewhere and we had a long correspondence how do you remember that? I must have told Dean this years ago but yeah I've got I've got a stack of letters in my loft here probably about 30 letters but, but even when the book came out we, we kept in correspondence I think he was yeah. still alive in this game we certainly corresponded for a, a long time maybe two or three years um so yeah he's a, he's a lovely old actor and a, a fun a proper 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 Londoner he was great um, another question that came up earlier on the feed, sorry, I, I will get to these questions, sorry. but somebody asked, um, if you could take one carry-on prop, what would it be? <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, I know. I, I tell you what, it's not, it's not my favourite film by a long way, but I love the Oozle and Bird in Carry On Up the Jungle, because that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's gone though, but I'd have that because it's so iconic and it couldn't be from any anything else. I've got a hat from Carry On spying here, and I've got a few bits and bobs from Carry Ons. But yeah, that I'd have the Usual Bird sort of perched just behind me there on my my record stack there. Go. Cool. Um, okay, so quite a few coming in. Um, does footage of Carry On London stage show <laughs> actually exist? <laughs> oh. I hope so. Who's asked that? As some say it does. Oh. Nick Overeem's asked that. Well, Nick, I hope so. I've been trying to, if it does, it's eluding me. I've been trying to find it for years. Now, believe me, I've been to the right places to find it. Um, uh, so there was a TV version. For those who don't know, if you, if you see my, our, our, our daily YouTube uh films there's a lovely original poster for carry on london uh behind me from 1973 the victoria palace headlining sid james um and on the first night 
um, which was October. Oh gosh, when was it? October sometime, 1973. Uh, ATV did like an hour long. Um, they obviously filmed uh, production or maybe a dress rehearsal, and they had um, an hour with commercials of sketches from it with interviews with the actors. And that's got to survive. I mean, this is 1973. Someone must have had that somewhere. Um, but you know, I, I, I. I sometimes think it might have gone the way of all flesh, but I hope not. I'd love to see that, mm. uh, but there we go. But I know I know people who who actually saw that saw that production. I'm very jealous. I was only three at the time. Um, okay, so Susie's back. I, I don't know if Susie, you heard Robert answer. What was your, Susie's question? I can. I can. It was about Vera Day, but she's oh, got, a, she's yeah, got yeah. another really yeah, good one. Yeah, I love Vera Day. Here. I love it being one, and I think I think <laughs> my answer was Peter Cook for a person to bring in who wasn't in the bed. Anyway, go. Um, she said she always wanted to know oh, why Valerie Leon was dubbed by June Whitfield and Carry On Girls. We all want to know that, including Valerie. Um, I spoke to Valerie this morning, actually. She's very well, by the way, if you... Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think on the commentary we, we brought in, um, uh, June Whitfield was on it, Jack Douglas, uh, Patsy Rowland. So they've all gone now, uh, apart from me. <laughs> I'm still hanging on. Um, nobody knows, really, because Valerie did provide her own voice in lots of films at that time. I mean, she certainly does her own voice in Carry On Matron, which is the one she did before Girls. So I have no idea. Maybe there was a problem on the recording of Valerie's uh, uh, voice in studio and they brought June in because she was in the film anyway and dubbing her own stuff. Um, but no, nobody knows. But it's it's once you know, you can't unhear it, can you? Once you know it's June doing Valerie's voice, it is definitely definitely June. But uh, but yeah, it's it's one of those those quirky carry on facts. Okay, Neil White. This is an interesting one. Do you know whatever happened to the Joan Sins and Angela Douglas dummies from Carry On Screaming? <laughs> they're in my loft. Um, <laughs> no, I wish. Uh, no, they're, 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 they were plaster cast, so I imagine they they were just broken up because. You know, I mean, don't forget the camera. They, a bit like we mentioned Doctor Who earlier, I mean, they, these things weren't really meant to last in terms of artifacts. They were just a, a, a quickly made, economically made comedy film that would be good business and then probably just vanish. Um, so uh, they would often, you know, there was that cliche that they would they would sort of steal other people's costumes. They wouldn't do that. They'd just go to Berman's and, and get the costume. So hence why um, in carry on henry uh sid james is wearing a costume that that richard burton had worn um a year or two earlier because it was just off the peg that was the richard that was the king henry the eighth costume um so so things were sort of reused and, and repackaged so i imagine they were made for one that one shot and then just brought it up alas okay um Okay, question here from John. He says, "Is Elizabeth Knight still alive?" She's not, alas, no. I think she uh, a few years ago, maybe ten years ago. So no, she's 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 gone to the great carry on in the sky. I'm afraid. And then Linda has asked, "What were the stage shows meant to be about? Like, what was the miss of them?" Oh uh, well, Karen London was was a, a rag bag. Um, my good pal, the late Dave Freeman, was brought in to sort of write some of it, and Tolly Tolly Rothwell wrote some of it. It was just a load of sketches, really. So it was a proper sort of uh, West End uh, uh, review show. There was dancing girls and singers and speciality acts. And there were little sketches with the six carry on team members in that show. So it was Sid James, Barbara Windsor, Kenneth Connor, Bernard Breslau, Jack Douglas and Peter Butterworth. And there was a sketch based around Cleopatra. And there was a, a camping sketch. Um, there was all sorts of sketches. There was a, a little medical doctor sketch. So it was it was like five, six, seven minute sketches, then a song or dance routine and another sketch so it was that sort of thing and the other the other official carry on stage show was uh carry on laughing the slimming factory which was uh up in scarborough um 1976 the hot summer the summer of the ladybirds it was so hot uh and sid james had just died alas so it was a strange year for carry on um and that was jack douglas kenneth connor um liz fraser and peter butterworth and that was a proper stage for us written by a guy called sam cree and that was just basically, you know, uh, setting a health farm and people trying to get uh, lots of cream cakes and, and uh, chips in this in this health farm situation. So that was a straight carry on farce. And that was a, the two. And the one I mentioned earlier, the Blackpool one wasn't officially endorsed by Peter Rogers. That was a, a sort of fringe carry on. Hence why it was called what a carry on rather than carry on. Something. Um, but yeah. OK. All right. Um, that was another review. That was just sketch sketches and songs again. End of the pier stuff. Right. Let's just see. There's more questions well, there's are loads coming of questions. in. Again, I think. Yeah. I think oh. we need to make this a, a double bill. Um, 
Oh my goodness, technology. See, this, is, this is water, by the way, in my um, Eeyore, Eeyore glass. Go on. Um, okay. Oh, Chris Spicer. There used to be a carry-on audio cassette back in the day mm. of someone narrating the stories with clips. Any chance of that coming out again on CD or I guess on download now? Download. Yeah, that was Chris. the thing called it was the Comedy Club label, I think. So that was all that was definitely authorized carry-on. And the guy they brought in to do it was was Patrick Allen, the, the voice of Barrett Holmes and the great the great voice man uh and patrick allen had done the narration if you listen to the little bit in carry on doctor that's patrick um the narration in of the kyber is patrick allen so he came back and it's the complete track of the film with him adding obviously exploration because of the stuff you can't see um and they were great the idea was they were going to do all of all of those the the the, the rank carry on films um so they did about five or six then they brought joan sims back in and she recreated a role of joan fussy to do carry on camping which was delicious and then I think Peter Gilmore did carry on Doctor. I think Patrick did a little bit of it. And then Peter Gilmore comes in as the um, ambulance driver guy to do his narration. So, yeah, they were fun. But, I mean, they didn't sell that that well, to be honest, um, because at that point you could get the, the VHSs so you could get the complete film. So it wasn't like, you know, they, they did used to do with the missing Doctor Who, the audio soundtrack, which was all that was left. Um, they sold quite well. Now they're being animated, of course. Um, okay. Yeah, I'd, be love I'd love to resurrect those, yeah. There's lots of backwards and forwards here about um, Fenella Fielding's dress okay. and what happened to it. And um, okay. the, I think she... You mean the one, in, the one that, that, the, the that dress. dress? The dress. Okay. And Paul Person said here, is it true that Benny Hill nicked or repackaged lots of Dave Freeman's scripts when he went to Thames TV? Well... Uh, he did with Dave's because they were good mates. Because Dave Freeman wrote a lot of this is another book we shouldn't be doing, Benny. <laughs> um, but he, he Dave wrote a lot of Benny's material when he was at the BBC um, in the early sixties. So they stayed friends, and then Benny went to Thames. Um, yeah, he, he, yeah, but but you know Benny Hill. Um, one of my favourite lines about Benny Hill is that he he, he didn't so much write all his own, he stole his own material. That's what he said. So yeah, yeah but, but but with Dave's blessing, he did that. Okay, so if you could make a carry on today, who would be in it? If, if, um, I can't possibly <laughs> comment on that at the moment. Okay, all right, we'll move on then. <laughs> who really sung the theme oh, for Carry God. On Screaming? Oh, God, yeah, Ray, oh, what's his name? Brett will know. Brett is Brett back on. It was Anon, wasn't it, right? And yeah, Anon. Oh, it's Jim Dow, it's Jim Dow. It's, it's somebody weird and it's somebody, it's, um, uh, there's a record of it. I've got, I've got an acid tape somewhere. Next time. I'll take of 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 uh, anon and it's on the thing and it's like this really fragile acid tape of, of carry on screaming um but it wasn't jim dale it was it would have been great if it was jim dale but um made him to do it for the for the reissue blu-ray or something but, <laughs> um what are your best memories of the pinewood events a couple of people have asked about pinewood events um me and my strange fiance um Morris Bridays, by the way, started getting jealous. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, it was just—it was just lovely. I mean, my God, they were great. I mean, Leslie Phillips being there, and it was just fabulous times. You know, just all my old mates. I, I got to know, and I mean, I've just come off a crew uh, in February with Jackie Piper and Richard O'Callaghan and and Tony Slattery and and Valerie Leon, and that was all carry on stuff. So it's just to get to know them, really, because I mean, you know, I hope it comes across. I love these things. I love these films, and this book which is my first one but I, I love them with all my heart and soul and and to to, to have got to know them as as mates it's just the absolute best so and to, to be in Pinewood I, I never got tired I still don't when I go back to those gates it's still the most exciting thing I'm like seven years old again it's this is where they made not just the carry-ons but James Bond and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and all those John Mills and Donald Sinden films and Kenneth Moore films this is this is this is Disneyland for me Pinewood Studios you know okay Neil's got quite a question here he said i had a couple of letters back from gerald champion many years ago and gerald he, campion, yeah. um oh yeah campion yeah. sorry i need my glasses That's all right. <laughs> he was champion was campion and <laughs> he was very despairing about carry on <laughs> sergeant he didn't rate it did you ever find any resistance from any of the actors you've met over the years because they didn't find the films credible um yeah <laughs> But not just that, but also because of the whole money situation too. So some people wouldn't didn't want to didn't want to come back to do commentaries. I remember at the time getting really quite frustrated, saying, "Why didn't so and so do this?" Well, they didn't want to. <laughs> That's why I, I asked them. Um, so 
Yeah, I can understand it because all their films were, were packaged onto compilations or put onto telly without any residuals. But no, Joe, I, I spoke to Joe Campion a couple of times and he was very uh, anti. But yeah, he did that one, of course. So maybe it was because he wasn't asked back, maybe, <laughs> that there was a problem. But um, he was great. He was Billy Buntner, you know, he had a great, and he had obviously Jerry's Club in London. So, so no, he was, he, he was okay. He wasn't nasty about the film to me. He just couldn't quite understand. But like Ronnie Stevens, who plays the drunk in, in Carry On Cruising and just that one Carry On film, he was lovely. He said, but I can't understand. It was like, whatever it was, 30 years later, he said, that's the one thing people ask me about. And I was in it for like four weeks and that's, I've done all this other stuff, but I only want to talk about the Carry On, so. Mm, there you go. Okay. Um, this is interesting. So Dean's obviously been watching our YouTube channel. Good lad, Dean. Thank you. <laughs> well, yours, I should say. Oh, it's ours. You're directing uh, me. Apart from Jack Taylor's hat, <laughs> have you got any other carry-on props or costumes in your collection? I've got I've got all sorts of bits and not from the films. I've got personal artifacts from people, um, which I'm sure will pop up uh, over the, the weeks and, and months we're doing this. But <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I, I may have something that I've forgotten. But I've got the thing is, Dean. I get given stuff beautifully by by you know families of of the carry on people, or you know collectors give them me stuff. So I've got I've got a, a wealth of stuff here. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I'll dig out something fun for another film soon. But yeah. Okay question here from Chris he says do you think the film Raising the Wind should have been a carry-on well no because it wasn't but I mean I know what you mean there was a whole load of those and there's, there's a reason why that which I won't go into it's a long story but they were Peter Rod and Gerald Thomas comedy films um, there's a load on talking pictures at the moment the big job is one uh, which was Sid James and Jim Dale um, the I Maiden is a sort of carry on. Um, there's uh, no kidding, Leslie Phillips film. There's there's loads of them. There's about six or seven of them. Uh, and Raising the Wind was actually actually written by Bruce Montgomery, who did the music for the first six. Uh, who did um, under the name of Edmund Crispin was a, a crime writer. So it's that's a sort of combination of the Doctor films because James Watson Justice is in it. Who played Sir Lancelot Spratt in the Doctor films? He's in it too, and it's got. Williams and it's a lovely list of phrases in it and it's great yeah but it's it, they just they, they were making so many carry-ons um that distributors were saying look you're making another one you're, you're pushing this one off the number one spot just hold back and the creator and producer Peter Rogers being a, a man who liked to um do the complete opposite of what people wanted sometimes said well we'll make more films but we'll call them something else so they they those early 60s they were churning them out like uh, Billio and uh, and God bless them for it. Okay, well, I think we're going to take one last question. Okay. And it's actually coming from your sister. And actually, I like this question. Okay. It is, um, if you could have been in any carry-on film, which one would it be? <laughs> um... Uh, I, I would, I would, I know, I know, I'm, I've not been asked that before, bizarrely, but I can tell you exactly who I would be. I would be Vic Flange. I would be Sid James's part in Carry On Abroad, because that last scene, as people who know me well, know me well, I do like a pub. I miss the pub. Um, but um, <laughs> that last scene when that lock-in in, in, in Vic Flange's pub, Sid and Joan Sims's pub, I want to be Vic Flange forever. Oh, <laughs> okay. Right, well, I think... Well, and there. Sorry well, if we didn't gorgeous. answer everybody's question. I tried to get through as quickly as I could. That went a bit quick, didn't it? That was that was really speedy. Yeah. That's... Well, I, as I say, I've written a few books on the carry-ons. We were going to ask people uh, if they've got any suggestions for books. What, uh, you know, uh, what would or... you like us to do next week? Take a running jump. That's a line from Carry On Cleo, isn't it? But anyway, Carry On Doctor is my favourite series. Oh, yeah, George. How you doing, man? A great show. Thanks, Teddy. Crooked Billet. Kevin, oh Kevin, how are you doing, Kevin? Oh my gosh, this is like this is like this is your life for Robert Masters. <laughs> um, well, we talked about because John's a fan, I know John Mitchell's a fan. We talked about doing Stepton Sun next week, didn't we? I think so we should we do. We yeah. doing Stepton Sun. Okay, let's do Stepton Sun. So we'll be live next week, Hopefully. same time. Yeah. Hopefully, we won't have technical issues. Um, the CAA bar. Hello, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Paul. I'll see you there, mate. Um, <laughs> and we will do step to and Son. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Gemma, for that. That was been fun. That's gone really quickly, but uh, you should plug. You want to plug the, the YouTube and everything else that you've been. Oh my goodness! So uh, Robert has a daily YouTube channel which you can subscribe. It's free. If you just go into YouTube and put in Robert Ross, you'll see his lovely face pop up. <laughs> And um, he's there, ready uh, <laughs> to talk to you about his daily comedy and, and advice to watch. Um, 
Oh, that's it. Really. Oh, that's and, it. And, and we've got the podcast, the, we got the Comedy podcast. Heroes podcast, and we're now doing this. So, you know, tell your friends. Um, Spread the words. If you enjoyed it, and if you didn't like it, keep quiet about it. Okay. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Cheers. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much.